looking for a foam warbird in this size range, something that's going to fit perfectly in the back seat of your car, uh, quick and go. You can't go wrong with any of the 1200 millimeter flight line uh, birds. <laughs> Hello pilots, welcome back to another assembly video here or a build video. This is on the Flightline RC 1200 millimeter Spitfire, the smaller version of you know, one of our best-selling Flightline birds, which was the 1600 millimeter Spitfire. I am an owner of that one. Love my 1600 millimeter Spitfire. Never actually flown the 1200 one, so I'm excited to get out there and give this baby a shot. As I've said in other videos, loving the Bearcat right now. Love my TA-152, which is 1300, but all in that same class. Uh, you can't really go wrong for what you get for the money uh, in a package like this from Flightline. These birds that are around the uh, 1100 to 1300 millimeter wingspans are going to be perfect for transport. They offer tons of excellent scale features, uh, and they're just great flyers. So this is a six-channel aircraft. You're going to need a six-channel receiver, which is going to be for your throttle, ailerons, um, elevator, rudder, flap, and landing gear. Uh, no lights on this baby, but you can see she looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure you can add some of those. And you get two schemes coming right out of the box uh, as far as the stickers go with two different squadrons in this European theater World War II scheme. So I went with the Johnny Johnson Kensley uh, scheme, thought it was pretty cool, but again, all simple. The other scheme that we offer does have invasion stripes. It was just a little more in depth as far as putting decals on and I just wasn't ready to do that. But if you can see, again, nice size to it, nice presence, and uh, we're gonna be excited to fly this. So what we're gonna do for this video, we're gonna quickly go through an unboxing, then we're gonna run through all the spec of this model, take you on a step-by-step -step build, and then at the very end, I'll get her plugged in, show you the landing gear working, and then we'll wrap this video up. So let's get started with the unboxing. All right, pilots, upon taking this 1200 millimeter Flightline Spitfire out of the box, the Mark 9 looks really, really good. You will see you get your two wing sections. They come in two halves, but nicely painted. Decals already applied on those wings, which is just a nice touch. Never like to do those edge decals. And you got the roundels already on there. But you can see everything installed, pre-installed servos, pre-installed landing gear in the wings. And uh, again, a nice, finish from Flightline. Now taking out, you're going to get your baggies. You could expect to see a bag with your control linkages and the glue and some Y leads because you're going to need to Y together the aileron, the flaps, and the landing gear once you get the wing on. Another bag is going to have all your peripherals. So you got the guns up front, you have your antennas, you got a rear view mirror, and you've got your scoops underneath. Uh, you do get a couple of other foam bits as well, aside from the two scoops they give you. Then you also get your prop, uh, all your prop assembly, because you have to assemble this four-bladed propeller. So you got your spinner, your hub, your nuts, and the four props inside. And then you also get your horizontal tail. And as all these Flightline 1200-millimeter uh, birds go, and even the bigger ones, they come in two sections. You're just going to press those on. And overall, to assemble the actual fuselage, it's just four screws. You got four for the horizontal tail and four for the main wing. So guys, there it is for the unboxing. Now, let's run through the spec. All right, guys, for the spec, we'll start with wingspan. Again, it's 47 and a quarter inches wide in wingspan. That is 1,200 millimeters and is about 1085 millimeters long or 42 and a half inches uh, from the tail to the prop. Inside, it's going to be powered by a 3748 580 kV brushless outrunner. That is spinning a four-bladed propeller, 12 by 7 on the pitch and the length. It's powered by a 60-amp brushless ESC. And again, you're going to have two metal gram servos for your rudder and your elevator inside the fuselage and four 9 gram plastic servos for your two ailerons and your two flaps. Again, the material, it is made out of EPO foam, as all Flightline birds are. And as far as the recommended battery on this, again, you're going to want to run this on around a 4,000 milliamp 4S powered. So that'll do it for the spec. Now let's go through a step-by-step -step build. All right, guys, step one, taking the Spitfire out of the box, you're going to grab that foam piece, which looks like a part of the fuselage, and you can see it right there in the manual. You are just going to be using the included glue, which they give you. It's like a foam tack. You are going to glue that to 
the uh, bottom of the fuselage. Now this glue is fantastic. The only thing I do whenever gluing together two pieces of foam together, definitely score both sides that are going to meet the glue. That'll just give you some more surface area and guarantee for a much better and tighter glue joint. So we score that with the with a razor blade, then just apply a little glue, press it into place and then pull it out till you see the stringies, let air into the mixture for about 60 to 90 seconds, and then press it down and you'll never have to touch that again. Now while that's drying, let's go over to the two main wings. We're gonna attach those. So here you're gonna need the two included carbon spars. They are both the same width, same length, so it doesn't matter which way they go. Find the two holes. Then make sure you pull your wiring up a little bit to get out of the way. And we're gonna score one side or two sides of the wings, apply glue between, and then you're gonna press them together with the spars in place. Now turning it around, you're gonna go into your peripheral bag and you should see these two plastic plates. Uh, those are for your screw joints. They also do help keep the wing, the uh, added insurance to keep the wing together because they sort of lock the two halves of the wing. Uh, together, so put a little glue on that, run them into place. And now once that glue is dry, the next step in the manual calls for you to just install the main wing. Now what I would do first at this point, because it'll be easier now than um, later, is take those three Y leads that are included and quickly Y together the ailerons, the flaps, and the landing gear. And then I made some labels just with some tape so I can see them inside the fuselage a little easier. But this is gonna be much easier to do now than it is going to be to do later. And uh, once you screw the wings together on a 1200 millimeter warbird, you're probably never going to take them apart. So let's get that out of the way now. And then take four of the eight screws included. You can, as you can see, they are the bigger three by 10 millimeter screws with the round heads. We're gonna drive those four screws into place and your main wing is assembled. So now moving to the tail, we're gonna install the horizontal stabilizer at this point and this couldn't be easier, no glue needed. You're gonna take the one side of the horizontal stab that has the spar in it, run that through one side. And I like to do this with the fuselage upside down because that's where the screws are gonna go. Then meet up the other side, press them in, make sure you can see all four screw holes perfectly, and then take the four screws left for the assembly. Those are the flush headed screws, the flat head, and you're gonna drive those in. Once that's done, you are done with the horizontal stabilizer. Next up is gonna be your prop assembly, and this couldn't be any easier. All the screws, all the bits needed are inside the spinner, inside the uh, spinner in the back plate, so pull that apart. You can see you get your eight screws. Those are two screws for each propeller, so you're gonna hold those down, and you notice on the propellers, they, all, they have not only a nub, but they also have a little hole, which makes it impossible for you to mount these wrong. They have the nub and the hole. You just drive two screws through each propeller, as I'm doing here. Once that's done, then head over to your prop shaft. You're gonna go to the fuselage, and you can see that there is a squared off part on the back of the spinner. It makes it impossible to not be able to line this up with the motor mount. Slip that on, slip on your washer, slip on your prop nut, tighten that down, then put the spinner right over the top and take that last screw with a little bit of thread locker on it and drive that right through the center and your prop is now installed. So now after that, guys, you have a mostly installed Flightline 1200 millimeter Spitfire. Now you just have to glue on all your peripherals. This is where you're gonna glue on the two radiators underneath. So they are marked right and left. They only fit one way, so it shouldn't be that hard, but definitely dry fit them first. Again, score them a little bit, score the foam in both places before you glue them. That'll help ensure a tighter fit. Then you get to choose what scoop you want for the engine intake manifold. So you either get the shorter one or you got the longer one, which I think would have been the desert scoop. So I went with the smaller one. Then you can glue on your two machine guns on the main wings and the machine gun side is gonna be closer to the fuselage and you can see that just by uh, the paint on them. The paint matches up perfectly with the bottom and the top of the wing. Then you have your antenna behind the uh, cockpit. Can't miss that, it only goes one way. And then you have the rear view mirror which glues right to the little part of the mirror uh, on the cockpit there, on the cage. And there you have it guys, at this point, you are done. All right, guys, and there you have it. That is a fully complete uh, Flightline 1200 millimeter Spitfire. I'm super excited about it. Uh, after all those steps, the last thing you would have to do is just your linkages. They give you four for the ailerons and flaps, and they give you one to attach the rudder 
uh, to the tail wheel because that's how it turns. The tail wheel's already installed there. So get those linkages done. And I don't like to do that till I have the aircraft bound up. Uh, that way I can assure that all my servos are centered and everything. So I just quickly threw in here. This is the Admiral six channel stability plus gyro. I'm going to find a location uh, to mount that. And I'll show you that guys when I go out and do a flight review, which is coming up very soon. I'll show you where that goes in there. We'll be able to talk CG, but most of these flight line 1200 meter Spitfires involve just taking, because there's hot, limited space up there. It's taking the recommended battery and pushing it all the way up against the, the firewall. I doubt there's going to be anything else I'm going to need to do to balance it. But we can see, let's check the landing gear. I'm going to turn her upside down. We are all bound. Landing gear, very simple, but looks, looks really beautiful, but acts almost in the same way that the 1,600-millimeter uh, bird goes. It's not a retractable tail wheel, but you can see the tail wheel definitely is uh, attached with the rudder, so that works beautifully. We do have scale, uh, we do have... We do have split flaps, so I haven't really uh, done the rates, but I plugged them in. That would be full flap, so that's a lot of flap. I don't know if I'm ever going to go there, but that's half flap, and I've got them uh, nicely done, and everything else looking pretty darn good. I am super excited to get this out here. Now, I did uh, the main portion of the decals, but for both, you do get all this nomenclature decals. I'm going to maiden her first before I bother putting all this stuff on. These are all the wing walk graphics and just all the little bits that I'm that is no fun to put on after a while, but it's only fun when you know she flies well and it'll make it give it that nice extra uh, detail. But again, that's it. I have a 3600 right now stuffed in there for S, which uh, I may end up maidening it on with that, but I'm not sure I'm gonna bring 4,000 to the field. I'm gonna try to go with exactly what the book recommends and also what you guys have been talking about on Hobby Squad. But guys, if you're looking for a foam warbird in this size range, something that's gonna fit perfectly in the back seat of your car, uh, quick and go, you can't go wrong with any of the 1200 millimeter flight line uh, birds. They're priced right, they offer great scale details, great flying characteristics, and you're getting all of Motion RC's support, not only through our customer service team, but also our family on Hobby Squawk, guys. Those threads for these models, since they've been out a while, are full, chock full of pretty much all the information, I mean, our pilots and the fans of Motion RC who've been doing it for years uh, with these have already run these things through their course. So you can have all the information you need there. All right, and there you have it, guys. That'll do it for this build video, assembly video of the 1200 millimeter Flightline Spitfire Mark 9 edition. Uh, if you're looking for more, guys, check out more, more videos on motionrc.com. Head over to Hobby Squawk, and we'll see you next time.